good for you. You can encounter many situations. It's normal to get in a car wreck uh, on the road. That's one of the most common ways to die. That doesn't mean that it's good for you. That's right. They, they say that it's normal, and yet we see the government buying massive amounts of potassium iodide and wanting it over a very short period of time. 14 million doses over just a 30-day period, and they want that in just now a couple of weeks. So I guess they're concerned about that, even though they keep telling us that it's normal and there's nothing to panic about. And then they try to panic us on normal issues. Yeah, and then the people are saying that this is global warming or, you know, whatever theories that they have, even though we've seen record low temperatures, record ice, you know, many scientists getting stuck out in the ice when they're trying to claim that it's global warming, just many kinds of wacky things going on around here. But you touched on it right there, David. The government is definitely buying this stuff for some reason. They don't normally go out and buy 14 million doses of potassium iodide. So now the highest readings that you've gotten were around the San Francisco Bay Area. Is that correct? Yeah, just a little bit south of here in Half Moon Bay where the gentleman shot the viral YouTube video, the citizen journalist. We ourselves, we encountered radiation levels about 370, and they say the normal there, uh, th those are CPMs, they say the normal there is about 30 CPMs. So, so from 30, which is considered to be the norm, to 370, and that's just what we found. Other experts, other people have gone out there and found even higher radiation levels. Yeah, yeah. That, well, you know, I, and see, that's the thing. It's, it doesn't really matter at one point level, whether or not it's coming from Fukushima, because we have our own domestic risks, don't we? We've got industrial pollution. We've got pollution from the government when they bury radioactive waste. And then we also have the potential to have incidents from our own nuclear power plants. I think that's one of the key things about Fukushima, is that we need to understand the risk that it poses to us, because we have the same design in our nuclear power plants. The former head of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission came out last summer and said that we should shut down all American nuclear power plants after this has been going on for quite some time because they have the same fundamental design flaws that we see at Fukushima. That's a very good point, David, and I want to end with this. We've been talking to people who say they've seen tsunami debris from Japan. So my question, you know, if you can see debris visibly come over from Japan, why couldn't radiation come over here as well? Exactly. And that's why we sent you and the crew out there, because people can't see radiation. That's why we sent you out there with Geiger counters so that you could see the effects of the radiation, could detect its presence. So where are you headed now? Well, we're going to head about four hours south of here to Diablo Canyon. This is a nuclear power facility to test the radiation levels out there. Okay, great. Well, thanks. We'll be checking back with you, Jakari and crew. Thanks a lot. Thank you, David. Bye-bye. Well, we're going to continue to look for what the mainstream media is not looking for and not reporting and what the government is dismissing when anybody sees elevated levels. You know, whether the levels are elevated because of Fukushima radiation or because of something else, it still needs to be investigated. Well, coming up right after the break, we're going to have an interview with Larry Clayman, and he's trying to investigate what the NSA is doing to our rights. Stay tuned. facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formulation fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. 
And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. InfoWarsStore.com. Well, welcome back. If you remember the landmark case, Clayman versus Obama, that challenged the NSA's universal collection of metadata as being unconstitutional, a violation of the Fourth Amendment. And we had a Judge Leon rule that it was, in fact, unconstitutional, as we all know it is. Now, the empire struck back, and we had another judge in New York, a Judge Pauly, said that it's just fine. And as we reported last week, the Department of Justice has now filed a motion to stop discovery in that victory. So we have Larry Clayman, who filed the lawsuit. He's with Judicial Watch and Freedom Watch. He founded both those organizations. Larry, thank you for joining us. Uh, could you briefly recap for the audience what the lawsuit is and what was at stake in it? I'd be happy to. I'm actually I'm just with Freedom Watch now, and people can find that at freedomwatchusa.org. Uh, we filed this lawsuit back last June. There's two of them, class actions, first to file class actions. Uh, we asked the court for what's known as a preliminary injunction, that is to stop the NSA from gathering this made metadata through cell phones and Internet on all American citizens, which it's been doing, over 300 million. And with regard to the first case, the one against Verizon, the judge entered a preliminary injunction order back on the 8th, 16th of December, uh, which bars the NSA from continuing to collect and access this data. Uh, it has stayed, that order pending appeal, but we won. The judge found that uh, that act is unconstitutional under the Fourth Amendment, an unreasonable search and seizure, and that uh, it likely violated uh, the U.S. Constitution. So that's where we are. And, of course, predictably, the government, to use the term loosely, it's the Obama administration through its Justice Department, comes in and seeks to stay, that is, stop the case, so it doesn't continue on, even pending appeal, because otherwise we'd be able to take discovery of the NSA and learn more about what's going on. We might even learn more than what Edward Snowden has revealed. That's right. They're scared to death. Mm -hmm. Obama's scared to death, and he had his henchmen at the Justice Department come in and file this motion. So we're opposing it. In fact, I've been working on it today. Speaking of that motion, I was just looking at the actual motion. I found an amazing quote from this, as in the introduction to it, it says, plaintiffs in these cases seek to invalidate important means by which the NSA, acting under authority of orders issued by the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, uh, they have violated those orders. We learned in November that many FISA judges have complained that the NSA has exceeded their orders and their authority, and we've seen many NSA whistleblowers like William Benny and others talk about how the government has exceeded its authority. This all was broken by McClatchy and AP back in November, that they were doing whatever they wished. Well, that's the irony of the whole thing, is that uh, we had a court, we have a very courageous judge, Judge Richard Leon, who entered an order which is at odds with what the this court, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, has done. And not long after Judge Leon issued that order, the Fisk Court went back and rubber stamped another 90 days for this illegal surveillance. So we have three courts now that are at odds with each other. We have Leon, who's our judge, uh, who found that this NSA surveillance is unconstitutional violation of Fourth Amendment. You have this judge in New York who was appointed by Bill Clinton. Not surprisingly, he found it was okay. He's a Democrat. And now you've got the Fisk Court and the Director of National Security, James Clapper and company, apparently went back to them to try to justify their illegal actions, too. So we have three courts that are fighting with each other right now. And it's most likely going to wind up at the Supreme Court, almost certain. But what's important is that we did have a judge put his foot forward and say that it was unconstitutional. Everybody knows it's unconstitutional. Uh, it's not really a great surprise, legally. But these judges, uh, a lot of them are very political, and they're yes-men for the establishment. And that's what we found with this guy in Pauly, and that's what we find with the Fisk Court, mm -hmm. who has authorized this illegal program in the past, even though they have found, yes, that NSA has lied to it repeatedly. Yes, they, back in November, they said that they had found that they willfully violated it. Listen to what one of the Fisk judges said. He said, NSA has generally failed to adhere to special dissemination restrictions originally proposed by the government, repeatedly relied upon by the court and incorporated in the court orders 
as binding on the NSA. They say that communication data was, they accessed communications data that it wasn't authorized to have. And this, this is from secret judges issuing secret opinions that actually the Obama administration actually released back in November to try to bolster their case. I, I find that strange that they would release opinions that show they have gone beyond even the rubber stamps that the FISA court has given them. Well, they were forced to under the Freedom of Information Act. They mm -hmm. didn't do but they're trying to, you know, they play the game. It's like uh, the situation with Robert Gates, who comes forward, former Secretary of Defense, who reveals that Obama's been favoring Muslim interests over American servicemen in the Far East, resulting in the death of some of our GIs over there because we don't have rules of engagement that allow them to protect themselves. Well, you know, Gates comes out, and he basically calls Obama a traitor, in effect, and then Obama praises Gates that he's a great, he was a great Secretary of Defense. They're just trying to deflect. They're trying to make it look like everything's normal. Sure, uh, it's not normal. We're in a state of revolution. Uh, the country, you know, is up against the wall. Unfortunately, most people don't recognize it yet. But that was true in 1776. So well, well, Larry, be well. before we run out of time, I want to ask you about discovery. Exactly. Explain to the audience, uh, people who aren't lawyers, who haven't been involved in a lawsuit, explain to them about discovery and why this is so vitally important and why the Department of Justice wants to block this. Well, they're definitely afraid of it. Uh, what it is is that you get to ask questions under oath. You know, and I'm known for that during the Clinton years. That's why they're so worried about it, because I had a good judge then, too, Judge Lambert, who allowed me to depose the White House and the Commerce Department and everybody under the sun, because that's the way you pry information out. And when you don't get the information that you've requested, you can go to the court and have it ordered. That's ironically, you know, how Nixon had to resign because the court ordered that he produce his tapes during Watergate. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't want to do that. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day here, we're in such a, a volatile situation. Never has there been this kind of a violation of Americans' constitutional rights that God only knows what we'll get in discovery, and that's why they're afraid because there's going to be court monitoring as to what has to be produced. And, you know, they can try to delay this. The judge has already told them he's not going to put up with that. So I'm confident that the judge will work out some procedure that this case can go forward as the appellate process lends its, lends, goes its way through the courts. Absolutely. Well, I sure appreciate what you're doing. We all do. We're watching this very carefully. This is vitally important because if the government can assert that its interests trump that of the people's interest and trump the legal restrictions of the Constitution, there are no restraints as to what the government can do. And we've seen that there are no restraints on what they're doing. We need to get those restraints put back on them. Your lawsuit is very important, and I really wish you well with that. We'll be, like I said, we'll be watching this very closely. Thank you, Larry Clayman. RimWatchUSA.org. Thank you very much, Larry Clayman. You're welcome. God bless. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, that's an important question. The question is, are we going to have a government that is open and transparent and obeys the law and the Constitution they sort of uphold? Or are we going to have a secretive cabal of people who set up secret courts with secret rulings? This is something that is vitally important. We're going to be following this very closely. And you can follow it here at InfoWars Nightly News by getting a subscription. Just one subscription you can share with 10 other people simultaneously at the same time. And right now we have a New Year special where you can get five months for free if you sign up at this time for the first time. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.